how do you personally or how in the past, whether it's past or present, how do you personally deal with that fear? You know, because you, you have mentioned, you know, from time to time on, on these live trainings and at our events and everything that you at one time and, and still may do consider yourself an introvert, you know, how do you personally deal with that? Well, I know I'm an introvert and I always will be because I don't go and seek people out. The only way I can talk to people is if I make myself talk to people. If, if I don't watch myself, I will go hide somewhere. You know, I mean, I can have this house could be full of 20 people and I will usually be by myself somewhere. And, and you've got to fight that. And there's a lot of good reasons to fight that. Um, but how do you, I think the way to handle the fear is, is to remove the things that cause doubt. So what are the things that, that cause doubt? And also, I think you can have irrational fear. There, I'm not a psychologist, but you can have rational fear and irrational fear. You know, rational fear is based on not having facts. And irrational fear, I think, comes from um, where you just, you just believe that things are gonna, you're going to fail out. You know, and it may be based on previous experience, uh, but I think a rational fear is normal. Like, you know, how, how do I, let's say I were to buy this house. I remember going through this. We, we bought a house, Audie and I bought a house. At, I, I don't know if it was our second or third or fourth house, but we bought it and we were going to make it. Um, um, it, was a, it was a big, we were going to go in more debt than we'd ever been in. And then right now, if I were to tell you the number, you'd think that's nothing. But uh, for us, it was like, if we go in that debt, that means we got to pay it every month if we don't get a tenant. And what are we going to do to get a tenant in that house? And so and most of the time you learn from actually doing it. So if we were not sure we were going to get a tenant, but I was hanging out with people that that's how they were making their living. They were, they were landlords, they had rental properties. And I'm, so I go to those meetings and I'll say, well, what if, the, what if you can't find people? How do you advertise for the people? How do you qualify for the people? How do you, uh, how do you make them pay in case they don't pay? You know, any rational thing that you could think of that, that would cause you to fail, those things create the fear. But if you're around the people like in, in the Alamoria in uh, San Antonio, We've got a guy there that I have a lot of respect to, and he, he's kind of a super volunteer, but he has a lot of rentals. And it's like, he's just so nonchalant about it that if you're not, I'm more like active in your face kind of stuff, but he's more nonchalant, but he has a lot of rental experience like I do. And if you have, and you talk to him, it's like, well, why would you have a problem with that? There's always people there to rent. And you just kind of see that. So whatever those things are that, scare you you've got you've got to touch them and feel them and get close enough and some people they're they move too fast they don't need to know all the facts which is probably wrong too they're 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 more uh spontaneous and they probably make a lot more mistakes and then you get the people who they actually need to it needs you need to prove it to them so there's there's probably a middle area where i get generally see how it's going to work and then there's a there's a, you know the extremes on each end. With this Airbnb, I've been I've gone to several Airbnb conferences. I've seen um, a lot of my friends do Airbnb. Uh, we've done everything that you do with an Airbnb except use the Airbnb platform and go to short term rental. Um, so we've done it all. And even now, you know, my first real exposure to it was seven years ago, um, where we went to Pam's thing in Waco where she had a bunch of Airbnbs and all of us, you know, there's like 30 of us and we toured the Airbnbs. She went through all of her books. I mean, she really, really went into a lot of detail. And even then the thing that held me back then was I didn't want, I wasn't confident that I wanted to run that level of business because it's almost like you're now you're in the hospitality business and you have to have staff to handle that or it has to be you. And, and if you're already kind of up to your eyeballs and activities, you don't want to take on more without a plan. So, so for me, it was like, my fear was I, I couldn't scale, right? Like I wouldn't be able to support it. 
I'm pretty confident that I could rent it. I'm pretty confident I keep the property managed. I'm pretty confident that I could collect the money. So the things that should scare you in the beginning, like your first rental property, those things didn't scare me. I'm relatively confident we could pull that off. What I wasn't totally confident with is we could, we could, we could manage it in scale. And I can already tell just with that. We now have to have a full-time person that if our goal is to get these five up and running and then, and then get to do at least do 10 our first year. And then uh, I realized now we're going to have to have a full-time person working on those 10 units that has to be, it's either got to be you or I'm sorry, it's got to be either me or somebody else. And it, I, it can't be me. I, there's, I don't, there's not enough of me to make that happen. So now I've got to, I've got to scale. So we have diff, different stages. We have different things that hold us back. And, and like, I've got to say, well, if I can't scale, then I got to overcome that. You know, like the book, um, uh, um, uh, who, not how, um, you know, realizing that, Hey, that's where a weakness I have. I have to attack that weakness. So I have to figure out how to get better, more qualified people to do the things they're supposed to be doing. And that's my role now. But in the very first, in the beginning, it was just, you know, can I get somebody in there? Can I, will there really be a buyer? Am I going to be on the hook for the rest of my life? So, and I think that's good to be afraid of those things. So fear is good. It's, it's when fear paralyzes you and stops you from doing things, that's, that's the problem. I, embrace fear, I think, but, uh, but don't let it paralyze you. Can you elaborate on that? What do, what do you mean by uh, embrace, embrace it, but don't let it paralyze you? Like what gives, give a little bit deeper thought on that. Well, when I was an in, in, introvert, I'm really am still, but I, when I behave, when I acted, when I was an introvert and I behaved like an introvert and I truly was an introvert, I was never going to speak in front of people. Thank you.